Now, you may have noticed that a lot of people are telling you to start a YouTube channel, myself included. I'm also one of those people who are telling you to consider starting a YouTube channel, but how many people are actually telling you how to do that? giving you the exact steps that you need to take in order to create and start posting high quality content on YouTube. Well, that is what today's video is gonna be all about. If you're new here, hi, hello, my name's Jade. For anyone who's not new here, then welcome back, I've missed you. In today's video, I'm gonna be breaking down the exact steps that you need to take to start your YouTube channel. So even if you've already started your channel, it's worth giving this video a watch because there may be some steps which you have accidentally missed. So I'm gonna try my best to keep this super simple and really easy for you guys to follow and what else do I have to say as part of my intro also if you have not subscribed to me please do so I upload content like this every week okay let's get to it okay so the first step in your journey to becoming a wildly successful youtuber is to figure out what it is that you're going to talk about also known as your niche now I don't want you to freak out and suddenly start panicking thinking, oh my God, I need to pick one specific topic to talk about and I can only talk about that topic. What is it gonna be? I don't want you to think that way at all. Instead, I actually encourage you to pick a few different niches and I'm gonna break down why. Essentially, the reason why people encourage you to pick a niche or a few niches when you start your YouTube channel is because a niche is essentially a theme or a topic. And when you focus in on one niche, you actually end up creating content for a specific audience. So for example, if you started your YouTube page and you decided that your niche was going to be fashion, you would end up creating content for people who were interested in fashion. This is a good thing because when you create content for one specific type of person or one specific audience group, it becomes a lot easier for you to grow because you end up being very targeted with the kind of content that you're creating and it actually becomes a lot easier for anyone who's interested in fashion to end up finding your page, binging all your content and deciding to subscribe to you. So that is the reason why people tell you to niche down or to pick one niche. The flip side of that though is that you're in the early stages of your channel. You don't know which niche you're going to prefer creating content about yet. You also don't know which niche is going to be the most popular for you, right? So instead what I want you to do is to pick a selection of niches, ideally between two to four different niches. And you want to pre-select these and have in your head what these are. And then what you want to do is ensure that you are consistently uploading content which is related to each of those niches niches but importantly you are uploading an equal amount of content for each niche. So for example you might decide that one of your niches is going to be fashion, another one is going to be skincare, another one is going to be plant care and your fourth is going to be yoga right so you've got a huge range of different niches there. Instead of just zeroing on one of those niches because you don't know which one you're going to prefer yet you're going to start uploading equal amounts of content for each of those niches. So one week you might upload a video for yoga, the next week it will be a video on fashion the week after that it will be a video on oh my god what were the niches that I just said skincare and then the week after that it will be a video on a few moments later did I say plant care <laughs> I don't know the other niche <laughs> I could just rewind this and watch this back, but no one has the time. The other niche, let's say it was plant care, that's what you're gonna upload on the fourth week. And when you follow that schedule, it's gonna allow you to build up a healthy bank of content for each niche and eventually, a few months down the line, YouTube is actually gonna do you a favor and it's gonna start telling you which of your niches are actually performing better, right? It's a similar thing happened to me. I had a few different niches when I first started out and then over time, after a couple of months, I started to notice that actually I was receiving a lot more views and engagement when I was speaking about specific topics. So then I zeroed in on that niche and that is when I kind of niched down and refined what I was speaking about more. It's completely up to you if you decide to do that at a later today although I will say that if you do decide to niche down in the future you will end up growing quicker but it is still completely up to you but the point is is that in your early stages of your YouTube channel you don't want to confine yourself to one niche just yet you want to pick a handful and just ensure that you are consistently uploading equals amount of content for each niche okay so you've picked your niches great you're good to go now you need to just make sure you've actually set up your YouTube channel properly I feel like this is a step that a lot of people just kind of neglect but it's an important step okay so I have just taken the liberty of creating a brand new Google email address just so that I can double check that the steps to create a YouTube channel now are the same as what they were when I did it a couple years ago so don't tell me I'm not committed guys 
because I am. So I've actually created a new email address which is called jadebeesontest at gmail.com and what I've just done is I've logged into my Google account and then I've gone onto YouTube, right? So the very first thing that you need is a Google email address. Once you've done that and you've logged into Google, you wanna click on this button on the top right hand corner and click on create a channel. So now it's gonna ask you to create a name. I was just getting second thoughts and I was like, am I really creating another channel right now? But no, I am, I'm gonna do it for the video. So I'm gonna call it Jade Beeson Test. And here you can see that I now have a YouTube channel. Guys, it really is that easy. I'm actually a bit shocked. I thought there was more steps required, but there really isn't. It's that simple. So now you can see what your channel looks like. And what you're gonna wanna do is head to studio.youtube.com. And what that's gonna do is open up another view of your YouTube channel. So what you're used to seeing is the standard YouTube interface, what everyone else can see, but you wanna get to the back end. So you wanna see this, because YouTube Studio is where you can upload videos, it's where you can look at your analytics, it's where you can customize your channel, etc. So what we're gonna focus on now is the channel customization. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that your channel looks well branded, right? So we're gonna click on customization down here, and then we're gonna click on branding. You don't need to worry about the layout for a while you don't have any videos yet you just want to click on branding so there's three different elements that I'm going to teach you how to use the first is your profile photo so I recommend picking a photo that is relevant to your niche in some way so if you've decided that one of your niches is going to be fashion then maybe you want your profile photo to be one where you've got a great outfit on so I'm going to pick a really professional looking one so this is the one that I'm going to pick it's got a plain backdrop and it's really well suited for someone who's within like the educational niche so mine's a bit boring but that's the headshot that I'm going to choose on this occasion and then you want to pick a banner image now this bit could be a bit confusing let me show you why so I'm gonna get up a banner which my designer created for my YouTube now I loved the banner the only problem is is that she had created a banner based on the generic size specs for YouTube banner which is basically the big area here but can you see that actually the section that is viewable on most devices is just one small part it's not the whole banner so a lot of people get this wrong and they find it really difficult to create a banner which actually fits in the right space so let me give you an example if i was to use this banner and i press done if i now look at my um channel so if we look at the banner can you see that you actually can't see most of the banner you can just see like the bottom part of my logo and you can see a bit of my photo but it doesn't fit properly and it's because we've done it to the wrong spec so i'm going to show you how to do it correctly in the easiest way possible right so this is what you want to do to make sure that you've created a youtube banner that's actually the right size you want to head to canva and you want to type in youtube banner i'll put a link to camera canva below if you've not used it before right so you want to get Canva and type in YouTube banner. And then you wanna browse the banners until you find one that matches your aesthetic and your style, or you can hit create blank YouTube banner. And if you're familiar with Canva, you can use Canva to create the YouTube banner that you would like. So if I open up my own YouTube banner document in Canva, you can see that this is what my one looks like. In regards to what you should put on your banner, I recommend having your name, having a photo, mentioning any other social media platforms that you're on, sharing your website if you have one, and including some information information on how often you post. So on my banner it says new videos every week. Okay, so that way your audience knows how often to expect content from you. So what we wanna do is head to Google and we wanna search YouTube banner template. You then wanna click on images and I recommend you using this banner template because I've tried and I've tested it, but I'm sure the other ones work just fine. You wanna copy that image and then you wanna head over to your Canva document, create a new page and increase the size of the banner image so that it fills up the full screen. So this way you can clearly see what part of your design most of your content needs to be in because it needs to be in the section where it says safe area, logo, and text, right? So to make your design process even easier, I'm gonna show you a few little tips and tricks that you can use on Canva. So you wanna crop this image so that you can only see the safe area for logo and text. You then wanna to head to the bottom on the top right hand corner and edit the transparency so that it's pretty transparent. Now you wanna drag and drop that to the design for your banner and you just wanna make sure it's centered. You can tell when it's centered because Canva will show you because it will have those like lines showing you that it's in the middle, can you see? So now what I can see is my design and how I need to edit and move things around to ensure that it's in the right area of my banner. So I now need to move my logo, my photo, all of that stuff so that it fits within that safe area element. So I'm just gonna show you sped up how I do that. Okay, 
so just like that all of my stuff now fits within that area so now I can just delete that box and I can download the banner so to do that you want to head to the share button click on download download that page make sure the file type says PNG because that's the best file type for this type of thing wait until it loads and then click download and it's going to save right you then want to head back onto your YouTube channel and then you want to upload your new banner so now can you see in the preview that it's actually showing you that all of your photos and your text is going to be in the right area so you want to click publish again have a look at your channel and voila you can see that now all of my text and my photos actually fit and I've created a really nice banner okay so final element of customization that I recommend you look into is this box at the bottom here which says video watermark so let me show you what that is here's one of my videos one of my first videos actually in fact my very first video November 15th 2020 throwback here you can see that there's this little watermark on the bottom right hand corner what says subscribe you want to create this this is a really great thing for you to have from the second you start your YouTube channel because essentially it allows people to click that button and easily subscribe to your channel at any point throughout your video so let me show you how to create one of these really quickly because you have to upload and design your own graphic so you want to click on Canva trusty Canva again and what you want to do is go to create design and then you want to normally click on like Instagram post square because that's going to be a square design Design and that's what we need so from there you want to go to elements and you want to type in YouTube so here we're gonna get a big YouTube button right this is what we want to get we want to get this for a couple of reasons but let's get a big YouTube button we then want to change the background of this so if you click on the background and click on this button here you can now change the actual background to this color red because Canva has picked up on the shade of red that the YouTube button is it's just a nice touch because it means that you're using like the actual right shade of red so now you've done that you want to click back on the YouTube button color you want to change that to white and change the middle bit to red and you've got a lovely YouTube button color. You then wanna to go to text and you want to add a heading. You wanna type in the words subscribe. I'm gonna do it in capitals, subscribe. Here we go. Now you wanna make this big and bold and I'm actually gonna give you the font that I use because I think this is the best font for this kind of thing. I usually use Bebas. One of my favorite fonts um sometimes i use oswald as well both work well i'm gonna use bebas for the time being i'm gonna use the bold one and i'm gonna basically drag it and increase the size of this text to as big as i can before it gets a bit ridiculous so i think i'll leave it as that and i'm gonna change the color of the text to white so now i've got this lovely big subscribe button it fills up the whole square and it's important that you use a square and you fill it up this way because if you end up using like a different type of graphic which maybe is a bit more rectangular and long what you'll find is that it'll be too small to actually see so you want to try and use a square you then want to click share go to download and download it as a png and then you want to head back onto your channel click on upload and you want to upload the banner it's going to bring up this page which isn't relevant to you because you've already created the design which is the right size which is square so then you just want to click done just like that click publish and that watermark is going to appear on all of your future videos because this is a new channel i can't show you what that actually looks like but if i show you my existing channel again it looks something like this and just like that you've created and customized your youtube channel okay so it's time for step three and this is in my opinion the most exciting part if this part doesn't excite you then i would urge you to think how badly do you want a youtube channel because this is the part where we're actually talking about creating the content so i really really want to make sure that you actually enjoy this or at least you can see that in the future you're going to enjoy this because i hate to break it to you as a youtuber majority of your job is just to create content <laughs> That is, that is the job description. So there's a few different elements that I need to break down for this section. So the first is my strategy for figuring out which video topics are trending, because yes, you've got your niches, amazing, but we need to figure out what each video is actually going to be about. So I'm gonna share my strategy for that with you. And then we're gonna talk about equipment, production, and then editing. So this is my method for finding trending topics on YouTube. And this is really, really useful when you're just starting out, especially if you're trying to grow quickly, because if you create videos which are about a topic that's trending, you increase your chances of people finding your video, which is obviously gonna help you reach more people and potentially blow up. So let me get my laptop. So I'm on YouTube and the first thing I wanna do is write a keyword in the search bar that is related to one of my niches so let's say that for me I've decided that I want to talk about YouTube growth tips right I know I want to do a video about YouTube I just don't know the exact topic so I want to type in YouTube growth strategies right because I'm looking for specific video titles and topics within my niche that I can use as inspiration for my next video so what you want to do is head to filters and you want to filter all of the videos by either this year 
or this month. In regards to which you should pick, it depends on how popular your niche is. If you're in the fashion niche, then maybe filter it by this month because you've probably got a lot of videos. I'm gonna do it by this year. So this just means that whatever content we're gonna see, it was uploaded fairly recently because us finding a trending topic for a video that was uploaded five years ago doesn't mean that that's still trending now. It means that it might have been trending five years ago. So recency is important. And then we're gonna sort by view count. So now we're seeing the most popular videos related to my niche uploaded within the past year. The next step that I'm gonna do is only available to you if you have downloaded TubeBuddy. TubeBuddy is a Google Chrome extension which allows you to do so many different things which will help you with your YouTube channel. For this case, what it's gonna do, if I click on this button here, is it's gonna show me some information about all of the creators. So right here, I can see how many subscribers all of these creators have. Now, I will put a link to download TubeBuddy if you're interested in my description bar. I love the tool, but if you don't wanna download it, then all you have to do is click on the actual creator's channel, like here, and here you can see how many subscribers they have. So it's just one additional step, right? You don't, you don't need TubeBuddy in order to do this, it just helps. So what I'm now gonna be looking for are videos that are related to my niche, that have been uploaded within the past year, that have a huge view count, but more specifically, that have been uploaded by smaller creators. What I'm looking for here is the view to subscriber ratio. So I'm gonna keep on scrolling down. For example, we've got someone here. This video received 572,000 views, which is great, but the creator has 1.3 million subscribers. So whilst that's still a very impressive, popular video, they've got so many subscribers that actually it doesn't necessarily mean that that's a trending topic, right? Keep on scrolling down. So here we've got someone that's got 500,000 views and they've got 396,000 subscribers. So the ratio is a bit more positive here because they've got more views than subscribers, which means that that video was pushed out to people beyond their audience. So it might be a trending topic, right? So that's about five viral YouTube settings that you must know. And that's just basically what you wanna keep on doing. You wanna keep on scrolling and scrolling until you find a few different video topic ideas that you think are potentially trending that you can use in your next video. In regards to equipment, I'm gonna keep this nice and short because I really do not believe that you need a lot of equipment to get started on YouTube. I used to use my phone to record my videos and I did that for, I always forget how long I did that for, but it was at least a year. It took me a while before I upgraded and purchased the camera what I have now, which is the Sony ZV-1. I just used to use my phone. I also used to use a 10 pound lapel mic from Amazon and my ring light, which I still use to this day. I still haven't upgraded my lighting and it works, right? So what I encourage you to do is to look at what you have and get resourceful. I don't want you to start spending loads of money on your YouTube channel yet. That's not necessary to get started. So here's a list of the things that I think you need. You need a smartphone with a decent camera. What you want to try and do is use the rear cameras because the rear cameras on your smartphone are always better quality. I also want you to potentially invest in a lapel mic if you can afford it. As I mentioned, you can get 10 pound like wire lapel mics from Amazon, which do the job. You also wanna get sufficient lighting. Now, if you're fortunate enough to be filming in locations where the lighting is always amazing, maybe you're always outside, maybe when you do your indoor videos, you can position your camera so that you're in front of a window. You might not need to invest in lighting, but if that's not the case for you, I do recommend checking out a newer ring light. They're around 70, 80 pounds. You also might want to use a laptop or a desktop to do your editing. It's completely up to you as to whether or not this is something that you do. For example, my other half used to have a YouTube channel and he used to edit all of his videos on his phone using iMovies. So you don't need a laptop or a desktop either. The last thing that I recommend you do get though is some kind of editing software. So as I already mentioned, you can use iMovie. It's very beginner friendly and it will be available on your Mac devices. Or you can invest in another software. There is another software called DaVinci Resolve, which is free. I don't recommend paying for an editing software yet, especially when you're just starting out. And I do recommend focusing on editing software, which is marketed at being a bit simple and beginner friendly. Don't dive headfirst into this really high tech editing platform, especially if you're new to editing, because you're just gonna overwhelm yourself. So now that you have your equipment and you know what your next video topic is gonna be about, you need to actually film it. It's the fun part. Now, when it comes to filming your videos, it's really important that you've prepared. I never recommend just whipping out your camera and just seeing where the day takes you. I'm sure there are so many people who can do that and my God, am I jealous of them. But if you're anything like me, you're gonna need a plan. Now, I personally don't like scripting videos because then it makes me come off quite like um, robotic. I was about to do the robot for you. Why? You know what the word robotic means. 
So it makes me come off a bit robotic if I'm reading from a script. So what I do instead is I write prompts. So I'll put a little screen recording on the screen right now so you can see what the prompts look like for this video. So I break down each point that I need to make and then I write out a bunch of prompts for it. And then before I film each section, I just read through it and then I start presenting. It also helps when you do this exercise shortly before filming because all of your prompts and stuff are in your head. And if you're more of a vlogger and you're gonna be out and about, then you still need to prepare. Think about what scenes you're gonna get. Think about what the storyline and the narrative of your vlog is going to be right how are you going to intro it how are you going to close it out you still need to sit down and map out what your video is going to look like the most important thing i can tell you when it comes to the planning section of your video content is to figure out what the purpose of every video is there should be one specific purpose for all of your videos at least one and when you're figuring this out you essentially want to ask yourself what do I want my audience to get as a result of this video? What is the one valuable thing that my audience will get as a result of watching this whole video? Is it that they're gonna learn something new? Is it that they're gonna be entertained? Is it that they're gonna be inspired? Are they gonna feel a lot more better about themselves and their mindset? Are you gonna create something that's really relatable and that's the value they get from it? It could be anything you want. You just need to make sure you've figured out what it is and you've written it down before you actually create your content. It might sound tedious, but this ensures that all of your content has a strong purpose and it's that purpose what's gonna get people to continue watching your content and also it's what's going to make people want to actually subscribe to your channel too. All right, so editing. Let's talk a bit about editing. Now, the things to know about editing is first of all, practice makes perfect, okay? I don't want you to get frustrated when it takes you five or six or even eight hours to edit your first video. That's how long it took me to edit my first video. If I tried to edit a video again now, it'd probably take me that long because now I have an amazing video editor but the point is is that it's always going to take a little bit of time to get used to the process of editing your videos at the start you've got to stick with it you'll be surprised at how quickly you start to learn the shortcuts and you're able to speed up the whole editing process Fortunately for all of us, we live in a world where the internet exists. So if you have decided to go with a specific editing program and you do not know how to use it, like you open it up, you look at the screen and you're like, what the hell is going on here? Well, YouTube is your friend. Search for a tutorial. There are tutorials on almost every editing platform out there available on YouTube. Search for a tutorial, set a few hours aside where you can just get to grips with how your editing software works. In terms of some best practice tips to be aware of when it comes to editing, you wanna make sure you get to the point of your video quickly so remember we spoke about what the purpose of your video is you want to get to that purpose pretty quick so no long like trailer intros what last one and a half minutes because people aren't going to sit and watch that you want to get to the meaty part of your video as quickly as you can you also want to try and keep up the pace throughout your video so any points where you feel like oh it's lagging a bit maybe you're even getting a bit bored because that's a big sign like if you're watching your video back and you're a bit bored at some point you've got to cut those parts out <laughs> Also try and wrap up your video quickly. A lot of the time people drag out the last few minutes of their video and then people just click off and then you miss opportunity for them to end up sticking on your channel and binging more of your content. And more than anything else, if there's any part of your video which does not add to your video's purpose, which unless it's like a funny kind of tidbit behind the scenes, whatever, unless it's something like that, if it's just a random piece of content that does not add anything to your video and doesn't align with the video's purpose, get rid of it, okay? You don't need it. Otherwise, your video is gonna be like two hours long. <laughs> Final tip, explore using music to make your videos more engaging. I'll put a link to a few different music sites that you can use to actually get royalty free music in the description of my video. Because in case you weren't aware, you cannot just use any music you want in your videos. You will get flagged for copyright infringement and that will mean that YouTube will actually mute the part of the video where that song plays. You might have to take it down. When you eventually get monetized, you won't be able to earn any money from your video. Just a whole load of problems that you don't wanna deal with. So be sure to check out the resources in my description so that you don't have to deal with that all right we're almost there guys it's time for you to actually post your content you've done so much of the heavy lifting you are almost at the finish line it's very exciting so a few things you want to bear in mind when it comes to you posting your content the first thing is that you want to try your best to ensure that your title and your description is populated with this lovely thing called keywords keywords are quite literally words or phrases that are related to your content and which are being entered into YouTube search on a regular basis so you know when I showed you previously about finding trending topics and I typed in YouTube growth strategies, that's a keyword. So you wanna make sure that you've got keywords like that 
in your title and in your description. And if you're wondering how to find the best keywords for your videos, I recommend watching this video, but also downloading TubeBuddy because that is the platform that I use to find all of my keywords for my videos. You then wanna make sure that you have created your own thumbnail. You don't just wanna use a screen grab from your video, which is the default option for YouTube. You wanna actually create your own thumbnail. And there are so many ways that you can do this. The simplest way in my opinion is to head over to Canva, obviously I'm mentioning Canva again, and just type in YouTube thumbnails. When you search for YouTube thumbnail designs on Canva, it's going to show you a whole load of designs that you can pick from. I recommend picking one that suits your aesthetic the most and editing the fonts and the colors and the imagery to make sure that it's relevant and related to your video. Remember that thumbnails are basically adverts for your videos, so it's important that you dedicate a decent amount of time to trying to create a thumbnail which actually does your video justice. So now that you've uploaded your video, you've got a thumbnail, you've got a good title, you just need to tell the world. Do not keep this to yourself right? I've been there before when I've started new projects and I've not told anyone because I've just, in my head, I've thought it's not perfect yet. I'm going to wait. And honestly, the most success I've ever experienced has been for businesses and projects, which I have told everyone about from the second I started them. When I started my YouTube channel, I immediately put a link to my YouTube video on my personal Instagram page and said to everyone, I have started a YouTube channel, go and support me. And don't get me wrong, it was petrifying. I literally left my phone on the couch and ran out of the house and went for a two hour walk to distract me from the fact that I had just told the world that I had started a YouTube channel. It is tough, don't get me wrong, but it's far better to rip the band-aid off and tell everyone now versus everyone just slowly finding out later. And also people will want to support you. Like people will want to watch your video, they'll want to comment, they'll want to help you out. And if you need a bit of a push, I recommend sending the links to your new uploads to your friends and your family and asking them to comment, like, share. Every single time you upload. I did this for six to eight months relentlessly every time i posted a video i made my friends watch it share it talk about it etc and i only really stopped doing that when i got to like seven eight thousand subscribers so feel no way about it get people to help you out i'm sure there'll be so many people in your life who would want to help you and that's it you're good to go your youtube channel is ready now if you're ready to start accelerating your growth and you want to take it one step further then i do recommend checking out some of the resources in my description including the creators club which is my membership club where one of my members sweet eve signs went from zero to 1,000 subscribers in one month on YouTube using the resources available in the Creators Club. So be sure to check that out. And if you feel like hanging around for a little bit longer, I recommend watching this video. It's all about my top tips for how you can blow up on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you in my next video.